Well, good morning. Um, welcome to uh, our VIP fireside chat uh, with HHS OSDBU Director, Mr. Shannon Jackson. Let me uh, welcome you today. Um, my name is Mauricio Vera. I'm the Assistant National Director for the Veteran Institute for Procurement and really wanna welcome you to this event, which we hope will be the first of, of, of several uh, fireside chats with OSDBU directors. Well, we save you the best for first. <laughs> so um, uh, today's webinar was developed to help uh, veteran owned small businesses accelerate growth in the federal marketplace. And that is what VIP is all about, accelerating the success of veteran owned small business government contractors. Um, just one quick note before we get started, I want to remind everyone about an upcoming program which we have is VIP International, uh, which will be held on May 10th through the 12th. Um, this program is designed to expand your federal and commercial contracting opportunities overseas. We still have room in the class, so if you haven't registered, please consider, uh, consider registering uh, if you've even thought about doing business, uh, OCONUS. Uh, highly encourage you to apply to that. Um, and for more information or to apply, just visit nationalvip.org. Um, and we're also currently accepting applications for all five of the VIP training curriculums. So look, go to our website for that. Um, one last thing is that the slides from today's webinar are going to be made available to all attendees via email uh, following the session. So uh, now it gives me great pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Let me tell you a little bit, of, a little bit about Mr. Shannon Jackson. Uh, he comes to HHS with a wealth of experience, having served over 29 years in the federal government in various leadership positions throughout his career, including military service, retiring at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the US Army. Thank you for your service, Shannon. Um, Shannon has led a network of 700 full and part-time small business professionals across the Department of Defense. Noteworthy is that the work of DOD's small business workforce results in more than $50 billion in prime contract spending on contracts to small businesses and over 40 billion in subcontract spending for small businesses annually. Um, we want today's event to be interactive. Uh, we're, uh, we're gonna, uh, uh, Shannon is gonna give a brief presentation about HHS and about the, about the agency and their small business program. Um, after that presentation, we're gonna open up the floor to Q&A. Uh, we encourage you to be on camera for that. Um, and so I will, uh, I will, talk about that as soon as Shannon is done. So with that, um, it is my pleasure to turn today's webinar over to Mr. Shannon Jackson. Shannon, welcome to VIP and thank you for, for being here today. Hey, thank you, Mauricio. Hey, I truly appreciate this opportunity to talk to the veterans. Uh, as Mauricio stated, uh, I've been in the federal government for 29 years and 24 of those years have served in the military um, you know, in the acquisition community, uh, infantry officer, uh, and then several, then I transitioned over to the civilian workforce, which has been uh, truly uh, a pleasure uh, to continue to serve. So again, thank you for this opportunity to talk to the veterans um, and the VIP uh, association. So uh, with that being said, next slide. <clears throat> Uh, so really, one of the things that I always start off with, you know, just to give us the agenda, what we want to talk about. But there's a couple of things I want to make sure everybody knows, you know, when I highlight this is one, we'll talk about some of the small business governing documents. And I think that this is going to try to, this is going to help people get that framework of where the federal government is trying to go to. Um, we'll talk about some of the performance. We'll talk about veterans performance with inside of HHS. Some of my priorities and then some executive order 13985 advancing equities and procurement is probably one of the biggest documents that is trying to really help and push uh, our small business community uh, into getting into that federal government and, and being a part of our industrial base. And then we'll go into questions. Next slide. Uh, so really first and foremost, you know, when I look at the mission and I look at the key tenants, um, really, we, our office, the Austin Blues office, is here to support the small business industrial base. We are your advocates to help you uh, enter that door 
to get opportunities for your company with the side of HHS. And we have specialists throughout our optives um, and our staff is with inside of the department and they represent uh, each of the organizations. So again, we, we, we maintain our position as the advocate to try to help our small business community to get opportunity with inside of the uh, HHS. You know, when I look at the key tenants, you know, we're, this is a partnership. You know, we participate in outreach events to try to get uh, our industrial base over into our organization to do good work. And, and again, being a part of that industrial base, uh, we are responsible for building it. And we have to build that industrial base with companies like veteran companies in all the socioeconomic categories and all of the small businesses that want to do work for the federal government. So again, um, when we look at that mission and intent, we are the advocates for the department in helping uh, our small business community do work within the federal government and in HHS. Next slide. Uh, so really here, here, I like this slide because one of the things we've really been uh, trying to really get to our workforce as well as our acquisition community here at HHS is here are the documents that really govern how we operate. And the first one is the Small Business Act, which is that 15 USC code 644K, which is how we are uh, aligned and responsible for working with small businesses. And these are our, our duties that, that we are held accountable for. Um, one, one thing, one beauty about the Osibu office is that we have two small business committees, one in the Senate and one in the House that we have to really report to. And then through our SBA uh, representatives, we work directly with them uh, to try to help our small businesses uh, with getting opportunities within the federal government. The next document is the Executive Order 13985, which is probably the hottest document. If you haven't read it, recommend you read it, um, just because it is really laying out the groundwork for the federal government to really, how do we increase our small business industrial base um, and really targeting our small disadvantaged businesses and doing business with the federal government. If you're not aware, uh, the goal, the uh, statutory goal for small disadvantaged businesses were used to be 5%. Now it, it's going up, it has gone up to 11% and potentially to 15% in the next couple of years. So that, that really means that there's a focus on how do we grow that industrial base and how do we get those companies in uh, to the federal government to meet uh, the overall objective uh, or goal. The next document really lays out uh, the OMB memo, really gives some specifics on how the federal government and the department will really try to get after those goals. Um, and it lays out really five different areas and a couple of them are very critical to one for us is really uh, trying to really build that industrial base and how do we get there? Um, with that being said, then now what the federal government asked each of the federal agencies to do is develop a internal plan and knows that internal plan. And we'll talk about some of the things that we are going to do from an HHS perspective to really how do we incorporate all four of these documents into our daily and yearly operations. So next slide. Next slide, please. Um, I always have to start off with where, where, where we have been at um, goal-wise, just because you want to know, uh, are we committed? And as you can probably see, um, over the last five years, the department has increased uh, their dollars that they prime contracts to small business. But there's still more to do. Um, and there's more opportunities out there. And this is where I am as the di new director here is trying to focus in on. But the one thing I do wanna let everybody know, if you have to look at it, when you look at 19, uh, we're at about a 26.4 billion budget. Uh, in 2020 and 2021, those were the height of the COVID. And as you can see, those numbers started to increase. Um, so again, we're still in a, a, a shape of, we're doing good, 
but how do we continue to grow those numbers? The goal in my mind is to reach the 10 billion uh, in small business prime contracts. When I look at the four, 9.4, what, what is it gonna take for us to get to the 10 billion and then continue to increase? So we got some things that we're gonna do to try to get there, um, but, but again, it's gonna take a community's effort uh, from our small business industrial base. Next slide. So I really wanted to use this slide as who, who when you look at where do we spend our money at um, and who spends the most um, in the small business categories. And, you know, again, NIH is one of our big hitters. Um, when you look at what they spend and you can just go down the line. So for the folks on the on this uh, um, webinar, Think about where you want to go and who you want to work with and determine where your services really uh, are aligned with. And then, as you know, you see that they spend the type of dollars that potentially can really, uh, you know, work in your favor for your companies. So, again, next slide. But now here, here's, where, here's where we have some of our, our, our challenges. And, you know, as you can see, uh, one of my key initiatives is how do I grow the small business, uh, the small, the small business, uh, small disadvantage, better known business goal, because that's what we're going for. Um, and we're trying to grow that. And some of the events that we will be having in the future will really try to target. You know, we do very well. But again, the goal, the federal goal, government's goal is the three percent. How do we get there? You know, really trying to provide those opportunities for our industrial base um, and really try to target some of those companies. Not that we're not targeting any other socioeconomic categories, but we do well in all the other ones, but two, which is the service disabled veteran owned. And this is the reason why I really wanted to talk to the veterans today to say, hey, listen, we have a big event coming up. Uh, in May, and we really are trying to focus in on how do we grow that and really provide good opportunities for our small business industrial base. Uh, next slide. So as I, as I talked about it earlier, is really when you look at, here's some of the priorities. One, uh, number one priority is the implementation of the uh, Executive Order 13985. And we'll get into some specifics uh, in later charts. But that is the key initiative from this administration. And how do we do that? Um, we've laid out some specific things that the department will really try to focus in on in the next year. And, and again, remember, it takes time to change uh, a direction of an organization and how we are trying to target those specific areas to help us grow uh, that industrial base. Because if everybody everybody should know, we've lost a lot of companies uh, during the COVID timeframe. How do we regrow that industrial base? You know, our partnerships with our uh, associations, as well as our partnerships with SBA and some of our other federal agencies, where we really are trying to work together and help grow an industrial base that will be able to uh, will stand a, a, a future pandemic. Um, the second thing, the second priority is really how do we grow uh, our socioeconomic categories? Hub zone and service disabled veteran known have been probably the Achilles heel for the department. How do we do that? You know, one of the things that I've asked my outreach folks to really do is how do we do targeted outreach events that drive to potential ensuring that we have the optics and staff that, that have requirements that could potentially go to uh, those SDVOSB companies um, and, and hub zone companies. So again, uh, we are trying to do those targeted outreach events because the market is out there. We just have to do a little, change it up in our strategy to actually get after uh, those companies that we need in our industrial base. The second thing is, you know, it's probably, probably the, it's probably the most, uh, thing that we, we really want to focus in on when you're trying to grow an industrial base. I hope that uh, each of the companies on this line today uh, learned something from that, uh, the COVID pandemic. 
Um, but the one thing that I learned, and, and, and this is what I've said to a lot of companies as I've met with them, is that the federal, it took the federal government about 60 days to do something. And if a small business did not have the revenue in place, did not have the systems in place, um, they found that though it, they, the companies were pretty much going out of business because they, if you can't pay your employees, you can't meet your requirements, how do you survive? You know, one of the things that I want to try to do is how do we grow an industrial base that is that is sustainable, resilient, and be able to be prepared for any future pandemics? How do we do that? You know, one of the things that, you know, we got to train the companies. One of the things we're focusing in on is trying to train whatever resources we have from a department standpoint. And when we have these training events where just like prime example, our, our conference coming up, we have a lot of, we have over 32 um, breakout sessions for uh, government and industry. And so we really are targeting good topics to help our small business community. But then also looking at how do we make sure resources that they have those opportunities that potentially help them grow their companies through uh, procurement opportunities. So again, that is going to be one of the things that we are going to have to do uh, in order to meet the future goals of the department and the federal government. Because when you think about it, you went up to 11%. And at 11% of the federal government's mission, the Department of HHS has about 13.08% of that. So again, it is going to be a challenge, but we need partners like each and every one of you to be a part of that industrial base. The next thing is, you know, there's a lot of things happening now with the technology. How do we look at, you know, with the, with the new uh, ARPA-H, the Advanced Research Project Agency uh, Health, um, that is a new uh, opportunity where, you know, looking at technology, how are we addressing those capability gaps? Um, I am really interested in, in, in small businesses doing technology, you know, because how do we make sure we grow our industrial base, whether through services or whether through technology. You know, we have to be prepared because I know that there's technology out there that small businesses have that potentially can be game changing. And we, as a small business community and a OSIBU office, uh, we, have to be, we have to be ready for technology that potentially can be game changing. So Again, our partnerships with NIH and their SBIR program and STTR program are going to be critical. So again, uh, that is another priority. And then the last priority, I tell you, this has probably been one that I have been fighting for for a long time, is how do we strengthen uh, oversight with prime contractors and reporting uh, with subcontract plans and goals? Um, we're starting that process now. Um, and one of the things that we've already initiate, initiated in my first uh, 120 days is training. Um, and I think training the workforce on uh, how we really uh, evaluate, assess, develop small uh, subcontracting plans in, in some of our larger contracts are going to pay dividends in the long run. And then providing that better oversight on those and ensuring those large businesses are achieving those goals. So again, and that is clearly an initiative of the federal government. So, you know, again, that is a heavy priority. And we started out with training. Uh, we are going to meet with some of our large primes here very soon to talk to them about the enforcement of this. Next slide. Um, as we talked about, here's some, spe some specifics of things that we are going to do uh, as it relates to the 13985 executive order. Um, one is, you know, in order to reduce barriers, create better competition, you know, and give a little bit more uh, readiness or preparedness for opportunities that are coming out in the, in the department is that we are going to utilize our small business customer experience as forecasting to as the centralized location where now our small business community can identify opportunities and then actually 
you know, really plan and, and do their uh, homework before they go to meet with the, the small business specialists or the organization that they're looking at aligning with. So this is going to be, in, in my mind, uh, a game changer. You know, we're, we're getting the deputy uh, secretary support and really uh, institutionalizing this for the whole entire department. So um, I think that that's going to be game changing. I talked about the oversight um, with the, the subcontracting is another critical area. We have to look at how we do it. We started with training. We're going to engage the um, industry, large prime industry, to let them know that we're going to be start to look at that. You know, because in order to grow your industrial base, you got to continue to help those subs get those opportunities that we have already con that we've that you prime contractor have agreed on that you are going to sub this type of work down to that industrial base, and we have to be more. Uh, provide better oversight on that, ensuring that they're meeting those goals that in order to help grow the industrial base. Uh, we talked about the increase of the, the trying to get at the hub zone and service disabled uh, veteran owned small business. That is going to be a critical initiative. Um, having those directed outreach events that really focus in on that is going to be uh, the way we get after it. As well as partners, partnerships with our associations, um, and that is going to be critical. The next thing is, you know, one of the things we had to identify when during my assessment of the department and where we could potentially uh, increase, and it's low hanging fruit, but what it is is if we can make a change in how we procure some of our simplified acquisition under 250k, that's going to be a game changer because if we can, if we can turn the tide to more small businesses doing those 250K opportunities. We're going to help it grow our industrial base. We're going to get some sustainment in a sense of how we do business and then help us in the future um, and ensuring that those opportunities that are statutory or far required um, can be set aside for our um, small business community. And then the last piece of this is the partnership with our um, in a, NIH and really targeting our historically black colleges and universities and how we bring them into our industrial base. You know, one of the things that I've seen over, over time was really um, our HBCUs and minority institutions really can help our industrial base, um, you know, especially some of the small businesses. Um, and, and really, how do we bring those into our, our, <clears throat> into our industrial base? To help us and one of the areas that we're going to be targeted uh, some of our universities with is research and development but that's a that's a key element to really trying to help uh, the HBCUs as well as the minority institutions actually be a part of the industrial base <laughs> thank you next slide wow next slide Okay, that's uh, good. That was the right. wrong quote on there. But okay, Shannon. I'm ready. Okay, Shannon, thank you so much. Great presentation. Um, lot, obviously, you got a lot on your plate there. There's, uh, I noticed just one observation from your presentation that, um, you know, when, when you had the big jump in the spend with the COVID money, um, it affected the percentage uh, overall percentage of dollars, uh, similar to the agency where I was at, I was in the government at the time as well. And uh, so it's difficult to come back up to those percentages, especially in the socioeconomic categories, uh, with the additional spend tends to go to the large big contracts that are already established. Right. And yeah, so, um, so yeah, there's a there's some challenges, but really great information, uh, uh, Shannon. So now um, let's open the floor for, for Q&A. Um, if you have a question, please use the hand raise feature in Zoom. Um, you can find this feature by clicking the reactions button in your Zoom toolbar. Everybody knows Zoom already, but I'm just giving you the, the, uh, the instructions from there. Just click raise your hand and I will call on you to unmute and ask Shannon your question. As always, please, please keep your questions global in nature so that we can all benefit from the discussion. Um, let me open that. I see some hands up. Let's start out with uh, Robert. 
Uh, welcome back. It's all yours. Up, oh, you're on mute. Still on mute, Robert. I'll tell you what. Let's come back. Let's come back to you, uh, Dr. Simpson. Let's let's go to you. Please, uh, please unmute. There we go. Hey, how you doing, sir? All right. Good. Good. Um, uh, as as we we both know this this famous word, who? Who? All right. All right. Good. Okay. All right. So you know where I come from in the, in the world of what we do and what we have done before. Okay. Um, we, won't, we won't bore everybody with our, our past discretions, <laughs> uh, but um, I came from um, from a couple of optives from HHS, and I have been trying um, vividly to get back into providing services with the organizations, but I found uh, resistance with the um, um, the advisors that are running the optives for the. Uh, either the Azdabus or either the um, Kotars, uh, they're resistant to provide information and also give you uh, data so you can actually make life a lot simpler to be able to perform actions within the organization. Now, I come from the organizations and I knew what they was doing and I know what they're doing still currently because it, it hadn't changed since I left there um, by much anyway because government moves so slow. And... Uh, the people that are running the, the sections and organizations are still running it. And I do communicate with them, um, you know, via email and or, you know, chat or give them a phone call. Some cases they won't ask your phone calls because they say they're too busy to talk to you. And, um, you know, you would request a meeting. They won't give you a meeting either. Um, what are you, what are you going to put in place to, to give us a fair shake at doing some business with the, uh, the HHS um, pool of personnel? You know, we've all, have been running around trying to get some business and we're not doing this just because we think we want to do it. We know what we want to do, okay. um, but we're not given the prime opportunity. You know, you say your statement is you're going to force the large entities to give us an opportunity. I've been around this process a couple of times. You know, okay. a lot of, a lot of senior directors say, Oh, we're going to do this with, uh, with the uh, large vendors and make sure to give you a fair shake. Yeah, I'm still I'm still getting shook for that, and I, it hadn't nothing's shaken out from the trees yet. You know? Okay, all right, all right, all right, Dr. Simpson. So there's a lot there, there's a lot of un, there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, That's sir, correct. it is, it is. Let, now, let, let, now, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at this point here. Then then you can you can you can shake it shake it down and tell me how you're gonna try to help with this problem. Okay. Um, also, I was one of the the uh, creators of the uh, Affordable Care Act. So I know the process and program similar quite well because I was on Obama's um, uh, communicative program to help create that solution. And I know the problems that it has and had. And um, you know, I'm not given any privy to what the problems are currently because I'm not inside. But still, um, I got an award from Secretary Sebelius for creating the, the, the parts that I created for the organization. So it's not that I'm I'm not a lane for it. Uh, I do know what needs to be done, and and I know how to perform the work with my personnel. But um, I'm just asking to be given the opportunity to perform the work. I don't I'm not begging for anything. I know what needs to be done. How can you give us a fair shake? That's that the end of, at the end of this thing. How can you give us a fair shake? That's what we want to know. Okay, so that that's so we'll start with how do I give you a fair shake? So um, as I will tell everybody. Um, what, what has really made the difference, and I'll tell you this, is that with the executive order advancing equities and procurement, so the performance goals used to just be the Osti Boo's responsibility. Now we have all of the performance goals in each of the senior leaders throughout the, the whole department. So now it's not just the Osti Booth goals, it's everybody's goals. And they're rated against those goals. So that is actually a, 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 a culture shift. Because now the question is, you know, and, and what I'm doing, just to help you, let you know, 
What I'm doing with all of the optives and staffers in HHS is doing a, literally, I'm calling a advancing equity learning session. So I'm, I'm letting you know why these goals are why they are and why they're in your plan. You might not have direct responsibility for procurement, but your organization does. And now you're going to be gold against that. You are going to be a part of this process, which I think will probably help. I, I know it'll help because now you, you're being rated on that. Everybody wants to do well. They Right now, I have a lot of the seniors asking, how can we help you get there? So that's a shift. <laughs> because before, it used to be, here's your goals, you hand them out, you make them, you don't make them. There's no punishment. Now, everybody's accountable for them. And that when somebody's accountable for something, they're gonna make sure that they do their part so they're, they're not looking on the bad side when it's, when it's evaluation and, 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 and uh, promotions and bonuses and all that. So again, the help of one letter helped us. Um, the second thing is, so when you talk about, you know, uh, with that advancing equity of what I'm doing is I am talking to the acquisition workforce. I am getting down to the root of it. I, I have a different presentation that I lay out to them, really telling them what are our true responsibilities to you. But then also we have to be a part of that, that acquisition team that's going to help us ensure that small businesses are are a part of the process at the beginning because it, we should not be at the end. We are, we are a, what I've always called, we are a tool in the kit bag that has to come with the kit bag every time it goes. <laughs> and what we have to do is make sure they understand what our role is. And one of the things we're doing now is educating our acquisition workforce, our program offices, to let them know that we, the Ostibu and our small business specialists are a part of that acquisition team. Then the third piece that you mentioned about the, you know, those large primes. Listen, that's always a problem. But I know how to, I, they're one of the things that the, the folks did learn in the recent course was there's ways to let them know that if you don't honor what you're saying in your contract, what, what's, the, what's the method to, to try to correct action? Is let's do it on the CPARs, <laughs> you know, because if you sign a contract stating that you're going to do X with this industrial base, we need to hold you accountable for it. Why would the federal government ask you to oversee it, provide better oversight? We have to do that. That is one of our roles as a partner with our contracting folks to ensure we do that. So again, it is a, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. The only thing that I can say is we are going to try to do our best to really try to work with our acquisition workforce, to work with our contracting officers, to be a part of that annual, you know, when we're going through those CPARs, we've made some real huge strides recently uh, on some of our large uh, FFRDC contracts to really ensure that small business is being uh, accounted for in those larger contracts. So again, as I say, Dr. Simpson, Rome wasn't built in a day. We're going to take this one day at a time. But again, if you're ever having access problems, um, you know, please reach. If you can't get one of the specialists, you call this office or email us and we'll get somebody back to you uh, to make sure. And then the last thing is to really help unpack that all of those things you, you had um, was we are, we are, the SBCX will be that platform of record that we're going to utilize as the, 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 the platform for our uh, forecast. This is going to give, this is going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to help reduce the barriers. Two is going to help small businesses like the ones on this call be able to uh, plan according, plan according uh, resources accordingly, be able to team with the right people, or even go it alone. Or 
you know, say, hey, I need to work with this company, this company. Who, who do I need to do a JV with to be to really go after this opportunity in the right way, not a shotgun approach. So so, again, I think that the, the having that centralized forecast with everybody participating um, is going to be critical. So I hope I think I unpacked all three of the questions that you had. Yes, it is. So you got them. OK, thank you. Excellent. Thank you for Thank that, you. Tim. Thank you. Um, next, we have Austin. Uh, please unmute and ask a question. Thank you. Hey, good uh, morning, sir. Thank you for the time here. Hey, um, the SBCX, is that the forecasting tool? And is that also the database for the small business to go in and put their capabilities and, and get connected to primes and program offices? It Yes, it is, it, is, it is the system that you get connected with our small business specialists. It's a system where you get to see opportunities that are in there, forecasted opportunities. So what I advise you to do, if you haven't registered, you got, they got a great team over there. Uh, once you go onto the site, um, then you register and they will send you feedback. Uh, we have uh, virtual sessions monthly um, for folks, I believe the, the head count is uh, about 25 companies per month or per session, just so it's an intimate setting. Uh, you get to talk to me uh, directly uh, and some of the specialists that participate on that. And then we have our uh, vendor outreach sessions as well. So there's a combination of things that you are will be uh, really open to, uh, to, to really be a part of the industrial base. All right, thank you. And do you have any metrics specifically or goals specifically for on-ramping new business? The reason why I ask that is that a lot of agencies, they use the same small businesses that is there in their coffer and they just get more contracts to, to, to get their numbers maintained versus if you look at how many new vendors they on-ramp, it's little to nothing. So companies like us and here trying to get into an organization, that's one of the barriers that's hard to overcome. They'll say, oh, we're meeting our goals. So, you know, we don't need to do anything special or any more effort to on-ramp new businesses or new small businesses trying to get into the agency. Any so, particular program? So, no, so so that that's a good. We haven't really, you know, I haven't really thought. Uh, so one of the objectives in the uh, executive order um, is uh, new entries. And, you know, one of the things, how I equate new entries, our company, really I equate in new entries is, are we, are we growing our industrial base? Um, and the particular areas that we have those challenges at. Um, and one of the things that we're really focusing in on is that market research. Um, that has those companies providing uh, more companies to our program offices to say, hey, there's other companies out there that can do this work. And one of the things that I've been asking the specialists to do is really highlight other companies that are in the industrial base that are doing great work. And how do we continue to grow that industrial base and get new companies in? You know, in order for us to know you're a new company, you got to register in the system. And then from that, when those opportunities align, we got to make sure, because one of the metrics I am asking for, so that, that brings it to my attention, is what I've asked my, my team to start to look at is when we do these targeted outreach events, I want to know the return yeah. of, was that event valuable to the organization? And did any of those companies get opportunities from that event that now are part of our industrial base? So I have asked that, but I, I'm going to take that other one uh, as a, a task to, to figure out what would be a new metric uh, for us as HHS. But I have asked the return on events that we have. And, and it's really, truth be told, um, when you look at the event that we're going to have in uh, May timeframe, the goal is to do a full day of matchmaking. So that's going to, you know, I was just on the phone earlier today with the HCAs, really trying to make sure we get max participation. And that the goal of that will be to have primes, PMs, 
HCAs, contract officers, and specialists available for uh, the industrial base to talk to and look at opportunities. I'm glad you're doing that because I go to a lot of these events and the 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 other POCs. We could tell that they're just going through the motion. There's no love. That there's no heart in it. You know. So it's like. I just, I just have to do five of these a year and I'm good. And that's how it comes across in how they address it. So I'm glad that that's now gonna be a metrics that they will have to be graded on or evaluated on. Um, one last thing, and, th and this is for Dr. Simpson. Dr. Simpson, you, when I heard you talk about possible solutions that you had, have you ever thought about doing a white paper with your knowledge about the solutions to that and giving it to someone like Mr. Jackson here who could then, you know, do an unsolicited proposal, a white paper to then push that through the different program office for them to officially evaluate and come back to you. Because when you provide an unsolicited proposal like that with solutions, they have to go through a certain process to make sure that fits their needs. And you know, it's a unique, innovative uh, solution to help their problems. And if that comes through, then you can get a, a sole source type of award. I'm sure there's some type of program, Mr. Jackson, that you guys have there that kind of fits that, right? Well, you, you have the SBIR, SCTR program, and then you have to look at where does that, that capability align with? Who does it align with? And then you have to go to through the process of sitting down with the, the organization that it aligns with. And does is that something that is a need? You see what I'm saying? Um, so so there, there is a process. Um, you know, Dr. Simpson, I, let me let me just let you know if, if there is an unsolicited proposal, you just have to send it in and we get it to the right folks to evaluate it, to determine where where the need resides. So thank you. Thank you, Austin. Mr. Austin, uh, Mr. Austin Thomas, you, you're 100 percent correct, sir. And, and I have done white papers in reference to uh, relevance of uh, solutions and issues within uh, the optives. Um, I got um, my information to the, all the sources, SBIR, um, HHS, to um, even with, I wouldn't even take it to the, uh, the previous secretary's office before uh, they was changed over to through the administration and through the, um, um, the election process of them being changed because of the appointed position. Um, and I got the song and dance. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, pull in the wool over any, anybody's eyes. I got the song and dance. I got the Pat and Turner. I got the, oh, you're a good guy. We appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, man, I'm tired of getting that. You know, I, I got better things to chase. Um, I own a contract with Goodwill. I provide personnel. I take at risk veterans and I put them to work. You know, that's what I do. Um, and my goal is to give them the opportunities that they can't be given anywhere else in the world because no one wants to give them a chance. And so I opened that organization and I started giving them opportunities. Um, these veterans, man, they have had it rough. Um, they have been homeless, um, dealing with drug paraphernalia. Um, you know, they, they had it rough, man. I mean, I, I've had a good life compared to theirs. I have been homeless myself as well. I'm not homeless anymore, thank God. Um, but I can tell you, my friend, it is not a funny feeling to have no money in your pocket to feed yourself. More or less, if you've got a child that you got to feed as well, it's not it's not cool at all. And I've been through it. I understand it. That's why I, I do what I do. So with okay. that being said, you know HHS is a good place, good optives, good people. They do help, but they just didn't do anything for the veterans when I was trying to put them to work. And I appreciate Mr. Jackson for coming on here and giving us time, but you know, I, I still hear the same song and dance that I heard before. We're going to help okay. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at okay. the end of the day, when, when it comes to all of us here on this line, we need some solutions, something that will give us ratification to make payment to pay our bills and to pay our personnel we want to hire um, for the struggle that we're dealing with. This is not okay. a struggle we're dealing with. We, we, we've made it through the pandemic. We've done a lot through this entire process to, to survive. All of us on this line, I, I applaud you for making it this far because a lot of brothers and sisters hadn't made it this far. They, they checking out. Um, Mr. Jackson, I hope you do make a difference. I'll, I'll, I'll still go through the process and hopefully that um, we'll get somewhere with this with you. I'll give it another shot, but 
from what I know from the past, um, I was a co-tar at HHS. Okay. So, you can look me up. Oh, well, well, so Dr. Simpson, so if we continue to look in the past, I'm we're going to stay there. Past. I'm looking in the forward. I'm going okay, forward. Okay, so give, give, give me an opportunity okay. to try to move us forward. I, I'm going to get You know, that. and it, it, if you look at my track record in DOD as the acting director, I mean, we, we, we really pushed it. And we increased our spending. We even, even in the different uh, areas. We continue to increase each year. So the one thing I do know and, you know, but what I'm asking for small businesses now, this is a two-way street. This is not just a one-way, here you go. This is a two-way street. you got to be prepared for your opportunity. That's right. Sure do. So, you know, one of the things that we're trying to work on and one of the things in one of the executive order is how do we promote better competition? So, you know, one of the things that I've always said is that I want small businesses that you come to the party, you ready to you you ready to compete. Ready to roll. Because because what how people view these programs is a handout program. It's not. What mm -hmm. we're looking for is qualified businesses that can do work for the federal government. And they've shown that they can do that. When you look at the, the um when you look at HHS spending nine point uh, four billion in small business prime contracts. That's huge. That's the second largest prime, uh, spin in the federal government against small business. That's huge. So what what does that mean? It is important one, and we have those qualified small businesses in this organization that are doing it. How do I, as a organization, grow those small businesses that we need to start to touch? And that is starting with registering for our, our system, getting in on forecast. If you if somebody has a problem and they can't get a response back, then please, please send me an email. You know, send me an email, send it to the link, you know, so we are able to contact and try to figure out what's the problem. Because if somebody's having a problem, uh, then then there's another problem. That's a institutionalized uh, uh institution problem where people don't call you back I've you know I've 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 i'm sorry but let me let, let me let me interrupt because i know we have a number of other hand raised that i want to okay. be respectful of everyone's time so let's uh thank you for that uh sylvester please i know uh, appreciate your patience please unmute uh, hi good morning uh, uh i'd like first to uh thank uh miss ash uh, and the VIP staff for putting this on. And then also like to thank you, Mr. Jackson, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and join us. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Thomas, Austin Thomas, asked a, a similar question. And I, I saw it in the chat, I didn't, but how do we get in touch with you? Because uh, we have, uh, we're, we're suppliers and over 2 million products in 10 different industries. Uh, and so, uh, and then we're, uh, services able also. So I think we can help you, the organization, uh, on a lot of fronts because, you know, there's a, some alignment here. Uh, one question I, I want to ask is uh, uh, also we're an ability one distributor where I know there are statutes that say if there are uh, like products uh, that the government must buy them. I and usually there are office supplies, furniture and stuff, uh, things like that. Uh, and so sometimes we we have a, an issue with that uh, because they'll buy, but they won't buy alike products. Uh, uh, so uh, that that's a concern. And then, uh, uh, like I said, I'll, I saw in the chat that I'll go ahead and register at the SPCX. And then uh, I guess that's where we'll put in our capability statement. And then we can go and have further discussions to see if there's alignment with what we prepare, what we provide and what you guys do. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Um, Robert, uh, let's see. Let's go back to you. See if you, I think you're unmuted now. You yes. Thank, thank you, uh, Mauricio. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, say first uh, to uh, um, uh, Shannon, thank you. Uh, we, we've actually have uh, start to see across 
various organizations on the federal side a more dedicated um, response. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I just want to kind of, I don't want to go into two specifics, but uh, you, you, you have to build a relationship. That's the hardest part. Um, and VIP has done such a, a, a great job for us. Uh, and I'll just give you one quick example. I met with uh, somebody from the SBA as they're, and I talked to them about the processes they're taking when they're doing the, uh, uh, taking over the SDVOSB program. And uh, the guy gave me an, uh, an email of address said, here, contact this guy. I contacted him. Now it did take about a week, but he just got back with me and we now have a meeting next week. So you, 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 you've got to build relationships, but to uh, the doctors uh, uh, that was talking on here, to his point, I agree. It's been extremely difficult. It's not, a, it's not for the faint of heart, is I guess what I would say. But thank you for all that uh, uh, HHS is doing and uh, uh, all, all the more for what uh, VIP is doing. Thank you, Robert. So, you know, uh, you know I, I, I'm going to take that back. Um, uh, probably, I think, uh, maybe last month, I did a listening session uh, with uh, another association. And, you know, one of the things that I think about and one of the things we're trying to do um, is really rebuild that relationship. Because I have to, I want the the organizations with inside of HHS to know that they have a small business community that wants to do work for the department and that are qualified. We don't have to stay with the people who've been doing work with us. You, you give, they get complacent and then they just give you marginal. Now you have, this is where we have to promote better competition for other companies to get in there and get after it but we got to give them information up front and early so they know to now be able to um, compete against other companies and to compete against small businesses. So then, then now you're now from the federal government's perspective and HHS perspective, if we got companies competing and they're doing it right, you're going to get a better product in the E. So I totally agree with the building relationships and, and that's probably one of the things that I've been doing with this road show is really building, reestablishing and fostering just a new uh, climate and a new uh, direction for our students. So thank you, Robert, on that question. Right, thank you for that, Shannon. Um, next we have Tony, uh, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, I'd like to... Thank Mr. Jackson and uh, Barbara Ash, et cetera, from the VIP for having this session. It gives me a chance to at least find out who I might be talking to. Uh, we were awarded a BPA back in July of 2019. We were one of five companies who were awarded that. And it was for Human Capital Management Administrative Support Services with um, Children and Families, Administration for Children and Families. They came out with one task order that year. I have never seen another task order. We've tried to contact the contracting officers, et cetera. The only thing we were told is that uh, Children and Families has their own contracting office now. We tried to contact them. We get no response. We, just, we get nothing. We have, I've never seen more than one task order. I've asked them if they perhaps left our name off a list that was supposed to get task orders released under that. Get no response. We get nothing. So I'm trying to find out how in the world I get any satisfaction in understanding what we spent all this time and money bidding that contract for. I mean, it was supposed to be a, a BPA for many task orders, et cetera, and basically there was one. So I, I really need to try to understand that we have bid another contract with HHS. We've been waiting a year and a half for a response on it. And, you know, just, just it's very frustrating when you spend all the money that we spend to bid a contract, and especially a large contract where you have a multitude of subcontractors and everything else. And then you come in and you bid and they sit back and don't give you a response. You know, is there anybody that we can go to 
to bring accountability forward to from those contracting officers if they don't respond can we get to, to the Ozdabu's office and say hey yes. can you contact these people and get an answer yes Tony so our Ozdabu should be able to help and assist you with those with that request so you know one of the things that it you know ACF is a uh, fairly new organization that I'm, I'm believing that their, their contracting shop has really um, recently stood up. But uh, let me take that one back because that, that, that's really interesting um, that, that that is happening. And uh, again, um, when, when, when these things occur, you have to reach out to your small business advocates because they are supposed to resolve these issues. So would, uh, if you want to send that in um, and we will, and then you can, we can work directly to try to help you figure out what the deal is with that. All right. I appreciate that very much. And I will be in contact because it's very frustrating, like I said. I, it, you, you know, and, and, and I, and I tell you, it, we're really, what really bothers me the most about it is um, if we're, if, when, when we have small businesses that commit to putting together the proposal and what it takes to put the proposal together, um, uh, it, it, they should be able to respond back. They should be able to get that information back because what it takes for small businesses to put those things together um, and, and we don't respond and that, that's bad on us. So we're about customer service. So thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you for that, Shannon. Um, I do see one other question that's in the chat um, uh, about another barrier for small businesses. Uh, it says, how can we demonstrate past performance when we are not given first opportunity to perform? You demonstrate past performance. So, um, you know, I think here, here's, here's what I've always recommended to small businesses. And, and, and again, this is a four slide concept. Um, I think I've mastered it by now. Uh, the small business that I've, I have uh, given this, this four slide concept, um, they've been winning. So, you know, you have really, it comes down to, you got your first slide um, is really the, you know, you got the header slide, but then you have the second slide would be just a little bit of the company overview, talking about what you do, uh, how long your company's been in business, um, giving a little bit of uh, understanding of the next codes that you work in. Um, and then after that, you go to the second slide and with the third slide, which I consider uh, the, the, the heart of it. And really first column in that slide would be, who are you doing work with now? And we, as uh, federal employees, we're, we're visual people. So say you're doing work for the army, uh, HHS, you know, um, any other federal services. So that's the first column. So logos are critical. Second column would be the core competency area. So whatever that next code that you're doing that type of work in, um, you wanna be able to highlight that. So that's the one, because that's the, that's the key to it. Third column, third column would be the return. What did you do? Just very short, very nicely bulleted, um, things that whether process improvement, uh, increased efficiencies, uh, uh, provided policy, um, you know, whatever you did that made a difference to that organization. So that's the, that would be the third column. And then the, the fourth column would be what type of contract was it? And the reason why I always say what type of contract was it, was it a prime, was it a sub? Because what that tells the federal government is if it was a prime contract, that person knows how to compete. Um, and he knows how to price something because if he did it for uh, that organization, then I know he could potentially do it for ours. And you want to be really, you want to be crisp about that, you know, because people are visual. So whoever you're doing 
that type of work within those core areas, you want to be able to highlight those. So that's the, that's the next chart. So then the next chart would be, here's your homework. Uh, first column would be the requirements that you're looking at in that particular agency to determine that what you align with. The second column would be that core competency area because I wanna be able to say, here's what I did for the, the HHS, here's what I can do for you with this requirement that I am showing you right now that I align with. So the second column would be that core competency area. Then that third column would be, and, and, and again, here's the lessons learned. Here's what I learned from the previous uh, contract. Here's what I've put in place as improvements to improve on what I delivered the first time. And here's what I'm, I, I'm gonna be doing if I got that opportunity. And then, the, and then that fourth column of that third chart would really say, am I going to partner with somebody? Is this gonna be a JV with another company? Just to give that person that you're talking to an understanding of who, who you, you potentially are gonna to bring to the party to help you uh, get after this requirement. And then that, then that last slide really says, hey, uh, here are some contract vehicles that I'm currently on. Um, if you do your homework, you determine what contract vehicles that they historically do work on, it's out there. Um, and then you also say, you know, by the way, you know, I am service disabled, veteran known. Uh, I am a hub zone company. Uh, I'm a woman owned company. You put all that in the back because what I want to know from a federal government's perspective is qualifications. Can you do it? Have you done it for other people? All the other categories are fine, but I want to know because you want to know you got a qualified company that could do work for the department. Clear, clear, clear and concise. So I look at four slides. If you don't, and, and, and I tell you, it works because it, it gives people that opportunity to know because what, what the KO would do or the specialist would do, nine times out of 10, they're going to call the person that you you mentioned in this in this thing to verify that work. Same like when they send those things in where, where we have to say uh, when small businesses want that reference and we have to put that information saying, hey, this company did X, Y, and Z. So um, I think that's the way to sell your company. You can't go in with a whole bunch of charts. Four slides, clear and concise, get at those points, and, uh, and, and I think that that will help. Excellent, uh, Shannon. Thank you so much. We are out of time. We're past okay. time, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I want to really, really thank you, uh, Shannon, uh, for, for all your insights, expertise, great advice to everyone. Um, and we're going to give you a little bit of time since you've only been there a few months. Um, but hopefully we'll have you back uh, okay. another no. time. But, but we really, really appreciate you. I know the VIPs appreciate your, your time and expertise. Um, so I want to thank you for taking the time. I want to thank everyone for your for your questions, your participation. Um, as a quick reminder, you'll also be receiving an email, including the slides and the video of today's webinar, uh, as well as uh, Mr. Jackson's contact information. So you will have that um, because I know there was a few additional questions that I'm sure they can reach back out to you, Shannon, or your team to, okay. to help them out with that. Um, uh, don't forget, everyone, that VIP International is open for registration. Um, and also, as Shannon mentioned, HHS is having a conference in May. So I, I, uh, I hope you all can register for that. Sounds like a great event. And, and I think VIP is going to be participating as well. So we really look forward to that. Uh, thank you again, Shannon. Great to see you, my friend. Hey, thank you. And thank Barbara. Tell Barbara I said hello. And uh, I appreciate Mauricio. And uh... Thank you to all, and uh, please, we, we, will, we will be there. We will get there together. Wonderful. Thank right. you so much. Best of luck with Thanks, everything. Thanks, Shannon. Yes. Hey, how you doing, Barbara? Good to see you. Good to see you. Great information. Thank you. And we're going to help you get those numbers up. Okay, I appreciate we're it. We're going to get to that 10 billion. Real yes, fast. I want to get to 10 billion. That's going to make a difference. Too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Well. Okay. Have a great one.